Hello and welcome to another free code session. My name is Jason Bach and I've cleared out all of the issues now for partially applied. I did a bunch of work yesterday just doing some documentation, adding the support for optionals, and I also decided that if you need to if you want a different name for apply, you can actually call it whatever you want, essentially. The receiver is going to look for if you start with the word apply, but that's it. In cases where you're going to be using ref, ref return and optionals, you may want to use a different name because that way it will differentiate it from another apply call or apply method that partially apply will make. And, you know, gives you that flexibility. But I didn't want to start tying into, well, what are you actually calling it for what different thing? You know, I put in documentation to say it's not actually necessary, but there may be cases that come up where you start having these collisions. And the best thing to do is to give one of them a different name. Just start it with apply. That's all I care about. All right. So it's a three-day weekend. Uh, today is actually Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And... You have it as a, a holiday day for where I work, as a lot of other people do. So I figured oh, I'm actually going to get some tests done today. So then I can actually officially release 1.0. So I'm going to spend maybe two or three episodes just doing some tests. I think I said I'm not going to do that, but this is going to be hopefully a very casual thing. I'm pretty confident that things are working the way that they should, but also that's why you write tests, because one of the things that tests give you is the ability to go, aha, this is actually not working the way I want it to. And so I've got rocks open as well because I'm going to probably be stealing stuff from that as well, diagnostics. And then, yeah, I call these descriptors here. I think I've got something out there just to call them diagnostics because that's what they are. So we're going to do this and make sure that we've got all the right stuff. So let's come down here. And let's make a new folder called Diagnostics. And then we're going to have, you can now partially apply rough struck Dynox. You know that word. <laughs> okay. So, gathering suggestions. Thank you, Visual Studio. I appreciate you not responding now because you have to gather solutions for me. Hmm. Suggestions, because adding one file is that bad. Wow, oh gee, are you kidding me? Just to do a control period, which brings up the light bulb stuff. Wow, that's, uh, that's pretty bad, Visual Studio. Maybe they need to get their testing act together. Okay, this is obviously not good. <laughs> not good at all. So we're going to shut down and bring it up again. Yeah, I just updated Visual Studio yesterday, but I think I updated it and then was using it. So I'm not sure why you know that would suddenly cause things to go kerflooey. Because there is no reason for any of this to be that bad. All right, let's try it again. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is not good at all. This isn't good at all. I'm taking a screenshot of that because that is real. Oh, holy crap. I hope I'm not stuttering right now. Yeah, encoding overload. Wow, that's, the, oh, I, <sighs> oh, geez, this is terrible. I don't even know what to say. I mean, I might just throw something out on Twitter. I might, <sighs> I may have to do a full reboot to see if this will work. This is I don't even know if I'm recording right now. I, this is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. All right. I'm actually going to stop recording because this is very disconcerting that it's being this bad. So 
I'm going to record another one once I reboot and see what in the world is going on. All right, we're back. I did do a Windows update as well. So I just did that while I was going to reboot. And it seems to work again. <laughs> you know, I just see if we had a grid returned. Could you tell me you seen it? Yeah, now it's working. Okay. That was just bizarre and a half. I don't know why it was acting so strange, but it was. So... Anyway, one well, of the lights can't tell over there, but one of the lights in my office here went out and it's right above where my drum set is. So that's going to be fun to have to replace to get my drums out of the way so I can actually get up with a ladder and, and fix it. All right, so we do something where we parse, load, compile, and why would it. Oh! That's right, we don't even care. <laughs> we don't even care. We don't even care. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is var diagnostic is equal to this thing. Create. Are those all internal? Yeah, why? And what's the big deal about creating a... I've debated this so many times in my head about should this be internal? Should that be internal? Should I just make everything, you know, external? Because in a lot of cases, this isn't really... For people outside of the library, this isn't something that they need. I thought I had in rocks. Yeah, we're going to do this. And shared. And that, except it's not going to be rocks test. It's going to be partially applied tests. Thank you for helping. Okay, so we're going to just make all these public to internal. There's no reason why we... But now we should be able to say create. There we go. And we need, guess what, a syntax node. You knew it was coming. So we don't need a symbol, though. We just need a syntax. We don't, we don't even care what the syntax node is. We can just say um, var node is equal to syntax factory. No. A literal expression. Hi, <laughs> we don't care. And we're going to give that to node. And that's good enough. Isn't isn't that just so sweet? That is just nice. Now, why do we have a get message on a descriptor here, which should be diagnostic? Oh, that's from the, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Got it, got it. Once I do this for this one, the other one should be falling down. Literal, exp oh. Hmm. I guess I should have actually huh, read the instructions. But who does such things? Not me, of course. Syntax kind. Sure. Doesn't matter. Okay, and so this one its message should just be equal to, I know, this feels a little hokey, but we're not doing any be in the right solution, Jason. <laughs> okay, descriptor title, sure equal to that title, that ID, and that should be that. Let's run the test. At least it didn't come back with the cannot start test because of the stupid test explorer not being not stupid or something. 
I gotta remember when I was recording this, the first eight minutes. I don't even know if that's actually gonna get into the rendering because it was being so slow and weird. So that might have all just been a whole bunch of crap. And oh my god, what what's the problem here? Um really? I creates a new literal expression syntax. Um, uh, um, <laughs> literal uh, public keyword. I thought this would be easier than that. If I could just say, "Hey, give me," I know what it's actually asking for is it's probably saying, um, range of valid values. Yeah, we need a token. Um, int. Keyword. Is that a literal? Yeah, it should be. God, what? This was... <sighs> oh, God. You know, I thought this would just be simple. I'd have a relaxing day. Can you make a class declaration? Yes, you can. And we can have a string identifier there. Look at that. Hi. I don't really care what the note is. I just want to thank you. <sighs> I guess we could also say that the location is also equal to the, we could do that. We could try that. This is equal to the nodes location. And it is. Okay, so now that we've got one, we can make more. Okay. What did I? Ugh. No, there. It's a great day in the neighborhood today. I hope you all know that. It's a wonderful day. It's a fantastic freaking day. I actually, this weekend, well, Friday and Saturday, I was doing sessions for Philly.net code camp and I did one on esoteric programming languages and I did one on, see how fast that is now, that's super fast. And one on what's new in C Sharp 9. And I am doing one, well not a code camp, but I'm doing a podcast of sorts for the .NET doc show tomorrow on source generators. So that should be fun. That should be fun. Should you have add missing usings? Yes, you can, and that all works. All right. Let me get this in here, and then I can talk a little bit more. Let's say H to that, that, and that. Okay. So I did the two sessions. They actually went fairly well, I think. Um, there was some questions. Uh, there was a woman in the first session on esoteric programming programming languages, she apparently really liked it and tweeted that she found the session to be a lot of fun. And I was like, well, that's cool. You know, I'm glad somebody was getting it. Um, the other one, nobody interrupted, even though I said, hey, come off a of mute and, and just ask me a question. But there was a lot in the chat, so that was good. Um, you know, I the adjustment to do public speaking while I'm in an online format is what it is. There's people that have been inconvenienced in an order of magnitude or five by losing family members to COVID. So I am not one to even remotely complain about the fact that I don't like, you know, I, I want to be at conferences in real life. <laughs> I really, really do. I'm really, I'm really missing it. And, um, you know, it does, I don't like it. I'd rather be there in person to get the the reactions from everybody, talk to them afterwards, have those hallway conversations. You know, as much as I am a person that is not necessarily an extrovert, I do actually find that I'm missing conferences and community events like that. So, you know, I'm, where I work, we've been looking at, well, you don't have that? I thought you were going to give me all the things, but apparently you're not. 
I guess you got to do it fast enough or something. I don't know. And we were talking about conferences and budgeting and all that stuff um, for 2021. And it was just kind of depressing, you know, because it's like we're, we're trying to guess that maybe by late summer, fallish, we'll start to see conferences go back to in real life. But a lot of that depends on with the new administration coming in, that the plan for vaccines becomes much more aggressive. Like I've said many times, I will be first in line with my family. I don't care if I have to get up at three in the morning to do it both times. I will be there. Absolutely 100%. I, I am not afraid of science. And, you know, and I'm also doing it for people that really can't get a vaccine because of compromised immune systems and stuff like that. So I want to definitely go back to a more saner life. And, and I want my kids to get back to school and have relationships that they're not building, you know, because it's, you know, they're at home and I want all that. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm going to be doing a fair amount of conferences. Actually, I suddenly come, they, there's like user groups and other things that came up like five or six things all within the span of a month. And I was like, wow, but that's kind of cool. I actually enjoy that. So trying to make it as best, you know, make it as entertaining and as best as I can and just make it work, you know. All right. T watching somebody write tests is probably one of the most boring things in the world. But what does Jason preach? <laughs> Jason preaches that, thank you, you must write the tests as many as you can. And you could even say like for this, that is this really that necessary? You know, I, yeah, it is. Any code that you have within your application, there's a reason why it's there. If it's not there, get rid of it. If it's there, it has value. It has worth. Test it. I'm not going to talk about unit tests, integration tests, and then test. Do you mock? Do you not mock? There are a bunch of tools. Pick what works for best. That's best for you. But for God's sakes, test. It is so frustrating when I'm not going to test. I don't do unit tests. Good for you, you know. But I know things change. I know things can bust rather badly, you know. And I would like some safety nets in my life. And plus, again, this just, you know, kind of drives, what, you didn't pick those up? Oh, you suck. <laughs> I should write a source generator to generate my tests. <laughs> I think that was evil to say. I'm not sure. Okay, I have to keep the time that I have over here because I did like eight minutes beforehand. And... Keep that in mind. Okay, we got too many, unexpected exception, and then unsupported. So those two will get blasted out because of reasons. Tonight I have a lesson for my self-defense, which I am thoroughly enjoying. Oh, now you're not going to... If you don't care. That whole ad missing usings is the feature idea makes sense, but it feels like it's just blah. Yeah, there's no that and then I don't need that. Okay. Why? Oh. There. Uh Oh, we need an exception. Fine. You. There. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I, I went a little copy paste happy and I didn't put the right thing in here. Okay. And so there is no location. So location here should be. Um, hmm. It's a good question. I don't know what location is going to be. 
is equal to a new object <laughs> location. Um, you can't just make location. Create off of a sim. Holy crap. Whatever. <laughs> I don't have the patience to try to figure that one out. I know I don't set the location, so it's irrelevant. Ooh, one failed. I bet because I do something with the exception, don't I? Hmm. Uh, uh, oh, really? Huh. Well, now. Ain't that a kicker? What did I say about tests? What did I say about tests? So now what would I do here? Because it replaces. And that's kind of... <sighs> makes me feel dirty. <laughs> Not fun, but, oh, yeah, no matter if you actually have nice names, okay, there we go, and then we'll do this one, and then I'll make sure all the things are internal, and then we'll do another episode. Wrote. Wrote, wrote, wrote. All right. That time, we're going to do all the right things. All right. That should have been easy. And it was. Okay, let's go through the uh, diagnostics to make sure that they're all... All right. Build and run tests. And hopefully then we can look at some other stuff. And we got all passing. Okay, I'm going to commit that. I'm going to start another episode and keep writing more tests. So thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.